Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Boomerang Ranger aircraft. This is video number three, if you include the unboxing in the build series. And uh, we're just moving through the manual as we talked about. So hang tight and we'll get into the build of this aircraft. All right guys, so we've got a giveaway to do in this video. I'm gonna get right to it and tell you about the giveaway from Sky Candy Landing Lights. All right, so I got this box already. I, uh, I did open the box already. I just couldn't wait. Uh, I got the box a couple days ago, so I had to open this thing up. Uh, partly because there's lights in here for my Huracan, which I'm super excited about. But we've got a light package in here to give away to you guys. All right, so what do we got in here? I love these new packages from Sky Candy. These are awesome. Let's just pull all these lights out first. And we'll pull the big diagram out. So yes, I've already pulled this out. I've already looked at it. So this is uh, what we have in this box. So we've got a tri-gear setup, which is these three here in the little blue containers. Oops. And those are going on my Huracan. So we have a nose, a right and a left strut. My Huracan's actually wired for all this stuff already. So that's exciting. Um, I, I won't do a video on actually installing that stuff, but uh, you guys will see it in the, in the flying videos. And then a nose set up here to give away to you guys. Now this is a very valuable setup. It's got a digital switch in there. It's got one of their new nose lights, which I'll yank one of those out and show you. And uh, this is what we are giving away. All right, so you can see here, this is the actual uh, circuit board for the lights. It shows you right there. This needs to be in the system because what they've done is usually that's mounted in the light itself. They've taken that circuit board thing out of the light and put it in line here, which helps to make this thing so skinny and small. So uh, great job Sky Candy on making these lights and uh, love this setup, it's super cool. So this is what we're actually doing as a giveaway for you guys, the sealed package is right there. So what you need to do to enter this giveaway is Okay, so how do you enter this giveaway? What you do, number one, is you gotta give this video a thumbs up. You have to be a thumbs upper if you wanna enter to win the lights. Second thing, you have to be a subscriber to the channel, so you gotta hit that subscribe button down below if you already are not a subscriber. Third thing you have to do to enter, because we pick the winner from the comment section down below. Make a comment, doesn't matter how long your sentence is, but it has to include the word candy. Okay, C-A-N-D-Y, because that is who or how we're gonna pick the winner. We go into the, uh, the little section that I've got on my computer. I, I pick the winner from all the comments and the comment has to include the word candy. So if you wanna enter for these lights, comment down below, use the word candy, and uh, thank you Sky Candy for providing the, uh, the nose light setup for the giveaway. Uh, love these things, they are awesome. My favorite light setup of all time. And uh, these are gonna look awesome on my Huracan as well too. And also this boomerang. All right, so we are diving right back into the manual guys. We have basically got to step number four where we got the uh, L brackets mounted on the servo covers for the wing. So next step, we are going to be programming these servos as their appropriate uh, surface in the X-Bus setup. And we are gonna be mounting these servos onto those servo covers. Now, pretty simple setup. Um, I'll go through one of these most likely, but it's a pretty straightforward setup, obviously making sure that your servo arm is centered and uh, everything's bolted down nicely. Uh, the next kind of main step to this is gonna be running the wires, which is kind of step number five, step number six, 
and uh, that's kind of the next thing we're working on. And then we will get into uh, step number seven and eight. So this is the section we're focusing on at the beginning of this video. All right, so the kit includes the, uh, I think these are three millimeter M4 screws, M3s, something like that. Anyways, they include the screws to screw your servos to the, so the uh, L brackets, but they don't include any of the washers that I would suggest. So uh, I go through a lot of these 440 washers from rtlfasteners.com. You guys can get 25% off, or sorry, 30% off your order at rtlfasteners.com if you use the discount code JV. Three zero. Uh, anyways, it's nice to have these kits handy because um, this is my most, probably my most used item in all my boxes, these, uh, these washers. So anyways, we need to uh, add washers to all of these, uh, those screws to uh, just provide a better uh, bite on the servos when we screw them down. All right, guys, I'm just doing the last servo here, which is the left flap servo. And I just want to show you that uh, you want to have center on mid flaps. So this is going to be our middle flap setting, which I've done in the radio. So this is basically our, our zero flap setting. That's flaps off, takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Now we're going to adjust that position or adjust the flap system when we get into the programming of the aircraft, but right now it's more about the mechanics of the, the whole flap system itself. So basically when I'm setting up these flap servos, what I'm doing is going to mid flaps, getting this centered, and going from there. So I've already programmed this as a flap servo. Now we need to check if it's going the right direction. So flaps off, and that is the wrong direction. So we need to reverse that servo. So I'm gonna go into the reverse menu. There we go. So now, flaps on. When I have that out in the wing, that's gonna pull the flap down. So that's been programmed. And I just want to check the centering and we need to adjust the centering there. So just a little tidbit for you when you do set the flaps up here, uh, you don't want to set them up where your flaps are off and full flaps is like this because I don't think you're going to get enough travel. And uh, I think mid flaps, we want to have it straight up and down. Now the manual doesn't really mention anything like that, but if you look at this little picture down here, you can see that the flap servo is all the way towards the surface when this is flipped over. So that's why I'm thinking this, and that's how generally I would set it up. All right, so now we've got all of our servos mounted for our wings, so our flap servos and aileron servos. Uh, those are all done. Next thing we have to do is start to get ready for our control horns. So they do talk about, uh, have this, they have this wiring picture here. So obviously we've got to run our, our wiring to the, uh, the leading edge hole on the wing. That's where all of our holes or our wires are going to come out. Uh, but we do need to get our arms organized. Now these stock arms come with three holes, they're, they're too long basically. So if you put them in the, uh, the, the slots here, uh, they are going to be uh, far too long to fit in the, the wing. So they'll actually pop out the other side. So basically, if you look at the picture here closely, you'll see that we need to cut that off. Essentially right kind of there for all of them in the wing. And that should give enough, uh, enough space to fit those in the wings. Obviously just adjust it as you need to. Um, make sure you sand all these areas here. They've got a pretty good diagram there of everything sanded. And uh, I think that's a pretty straightforward setup. Now they do show here, which is actually kind of a nice step, uh, cutting around the double slot spacer or mounting piece there. And that's going to allow this 
to actually mount onto the wood. So that's kind of a nice touch there. I see on a lot of aerobatic aircraft that they don't do that, and this just gets mounted to the covering, which really doesn't do a whole lot except keep those pieces, uh, those arms stuck together. So, so manual's pretty good, pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna cut all these guys down and get them sanded and prepped and ready to install in the wings. All right, guys, I'm just gonna jump into uh, to programming these PWM converters. So we've talked a little bit about this in the first video, we're doing all of these as X bus channels. So what we need to do is we need the throttle, brakes, lights, and gear to be all PWM, so standard servo outputs. Um, if we plug our turbine into a X bus output, uh, it's not gonna jive with each other. So, uh, so we've already programmed this converter right here. So we've plugged the converter into the X bus channel now these converters all come set up as you'll see one and two on them. So they're a throttle channel because that's what everything comes set up as. And we're sub ID number one and sub ID number two. That's what the one and two relates to on those converters. So what I did was I went into throttle sub ID number one. I went to ID change to gear hit set, and now when I operate my gear switch, which is that one right there, you'll see the servo operates as our gear channel. Okay, now this servo hasn't been programmed as an X-Bus servo, it's just a, a servo out of the box. Now if we take that servo and plug it into sub ID number two, you can see it's slow starting there because the JR servos are a slow start servo, and now this operates as a throttle channel. Okay, so what we wanna do here is we're gonna go into sub ID number two, because that's what we're plugged into. And we wanna turn that into the light channel, which is channel uh, 12. So that relates to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's aux seven. Set. And now when we flick our light switch, our servo works. So now this converter is basically deciding what those X bus channels do. So it takes the X bus signal, it converts it into uh, the gear channel and the light channel. Now I'm just gonna label these as to what channel they are on the radio, and now our PWM converters are programmed. All right, so we're just getting the control horns set up and ready to install. So we've cut the uh, bottom section off as we talked about. Uh, then what I did was bolt the control horn through two of them, and then we put this bottom plate on the bottom and one of that, uh, the side that's gonna be against the surface is sanded as well. So this is all ready to go and ready to install in the surface. With the way we're setting these flaps up, which is gonna be zero flaps roughly there, mid flaps or takeoff flaps is servo horn middle and full flaps is servo horn that way. What we wanna do is we wanna make sure we thread this arm or rod in all the way on the clevises. So now if you put that control rod with that ball joint threaded in all the way, the servo's gotta come towards the camera to be at flaps off, which is good. So there's quite a bit of adjustment on these ball joints. You thread it all the way in, they're about here. So this side's actually threaded all the way in. You can see how much thread is left there. So uh, it's the exact same on this side. So there's quite an adjustment here as well. Now we're gonna keep these rods. I've heard of some guys changing these rods out and they're probably honestly just fine the way they are. We are gonna go one step further and uh, glue some carbon, uh, some carbon tube over top of there, but uh, that'll be a last final step. What we wanna do is we wanna get all this set up and glued in place first. So. Anyways, just wanted to show you that. So here's the other wing. 
we're going to uh, have these threaded in all the way. When you do the aileron, you don't want to have them threaded in all the way because you want your aileron middle to match up with your servo middle. So that's going to be a bit of an adjustment and that linkage is going to end up being longer than the flap linkage. So that's the overview here. And then you can see on this one, I've taken it one step further and basically inserted it, cut around with an X-Acto knife and we've pulled that off. So we're gonna use high saw inside of the slots. Right now we are getting number seven completed and we're just moving into seven and a half and uh, getting this stuff done. And then once those horns are on, we'll start running our wires for our gears and our servos and our lights and all that kind of stuff. So very close. All right, so I ended up gluing these in with just high saw. So I know I talked about possibly using CA on there, but just made more sense to use high saw and uh, it was uh, just easier because when you put this in, the high saw squished out everywhere and stuff. So yeah, anyways, it is, uh, it's been curing now for about eight hours and they're nice and solid. So, so that's done on both wings. Uh, on the left wing here, I did run the light wires all the way to the wing tip. Now the easiest way to do this, there's, it's a bit of a tricky path to get from the wing tip all the way over, even though it's like, uh, it seems like it's straight wide open. So anyways, it's easier to come to the servo hatches first and then go this way, but the wire does end up going all the way across. So other thing I've done is I've made up my servo connections for the flap and aileron surface. Now these run from the opening here all the way to the actual servo hatch itself. I talk about this often, you don't want to use your length of your servo line in the wing. Problem is if you have this coming all the way out and it just, in this case, it happens to maybe almost be long enough and you make this as part of your lead and something goes wrong with the servo, how do you change the servo, right? Because now it's tied into the system or it's buried in the wing, whatever. It's way easier just to open up the servo hatch, have your connector right here. So this wire all bundled up together and then be able to just unplug it and change the servo. So next thing we're gonna do before we plug the leads in, we wanna make sure that we have our servos all set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount these servos just uh, temporarily by using two screws and we're gonna get our linkages and everything all set up first. With our ball joint on there, we need to measure our carbon rod, take that ball joint off, glue the carbon rod on, then reinstall the ball joint. So there's a bit of a process here, but uh, it won't be too terrible, but we're gonna just do this one at a time so we can take this servo lead, run it out of this hatch, plug it into the receiver, and then get all this stuff set up. All right, guys, one thing, I'm just looking through all the parts here. One thing the manual doesn't talk about is the screws used to fix the main servo covers to the wing. So there is no extra screws for that. You basically have uh, all of your screws to mount the L brackets to the plates. You've got 16 of those. You've got all the screws to mount your servos onto the, uh, the L brackets, which are the long ones there, but uh, they don't talk about anything for mounting the servo plates to the wing. So keep that in mind. Um, you need to figure out what you're gonna do with that. So as we've talked about previously, they do have three millimeter blind nuts that are installed in there. So what I'm gonna be using is just uh, three millimeter screws essentially. So, but uh, anyways, just wanted to point that out. You will need to find 16 pieces of hardware to mount the trays to the wing or the hatch covers to the wing. Okay, so we're setting up the flap here. Now we've got our servo plugged in, that's working. 
Now we wanna do the flap off setting, okay? So what we've done is I have installed the other ball link on here and we've threaded that ball link all the way down. So now we are bottomed out on both ends of this whole setup, which is what we're looking for. So the servo or the flap off position is where we wanna do our programming. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the flap menu on the radio. And we're gonna adjust our off and reduce that travel until we line up with the hole on the ball joint. Now what we can do is we're gonna take a ruler and run it straight across here or a straight edge. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell us when we are at flap in the zero position. Now the wing does have some curve on it here, but uh, if you look at the kind of the base section, so from here to the flap, that's what you're, uh, you're looking at to try and get that uh, nice and flat. So essentially what we're doing is we're gonna set up one flap, right? And uh, when this one's set up, all we need to do is match the other wing to this guy. But what this does is this now gets our flaps set up where we have flaps off, take off flaps, which we can adjust still, and landing flaps. But mechanically, we want to, we need to match those servos as best as possible. So now with this set up and our travel set up, our other flap servo matches this, is gonna match this movement. So uh, what I need to do now is I need to get the carbon rod made up, but what I'll probably do first is I'll get that other, uh, the other wing set up and make sure that I'm happy with how they both work. And then as a final step, then we'll get the carbon rod made up. All right, and this is the, uh, the other wing and uh, everything matches up perfectly. So we've got the rod uh, all put together and uh, we're nice and flat on the flap surface. And so that means that our takeoff flap and landing flap is gonna match up. Perfect. So there we go, the flaps are now set up and matched. So all we need to do is measure our distances here for our piece of carbon rod that's gonna go over top of that. And uh, this is gonna be set up. Now the aileron's actually gonna be a little bit easier to deal with because our servo is in the center position. So we're just making the, uh, the servo center and the linkage and everything line up. And we're essentially gonna match the aileron up with the flap. Uh, at zero flaps. So that's how we're gonna set that up. And uh, so a pretty simple setup on the aileron. All right, so we've got our flap set up, plugged into the receiver set up here. We've got our aileron uh, plugged into the receiver as well too. So this is now centered. And uh, what I've done is threaded this together until our aileron matches up perfectly with our flap. So now we know that uh, that's the linkage length. So now what we do is we just take our carbon rod like this and I just put a little mark on the carbon rod. We know how long to make this and then we just take this ball joint off, put some glue on here, install the carbon rod, put this linkage back together and then as long as our carbon rod is cut to the proper length, this all goes back together perfectly and our wings are almost complete. All right, so we've got all of our carbon rods cut and you can see here what the goal is. So what I'm looking for is I want that to be as tight as possible in between those two ball joints. So when I glue this all together, I know exactly where to put it. So we've got all four of them ready. Now what we do is we just take one of these sides off and uh, put some high saw on here, slip the rod over top, tighten it down and let it cure. All right, so uh, as modelers, I was just sitting here thinking, as modelers, our general tendency is always to over-engineer, re-engineer, 
make better, redo everything. Now, not everything needs to be re-engineered. So um, the reason I am putting the carbon rods on these linkages is purely because we're putting a 120 in this aircraft. So the, the linkage setup on this, I, th I think is, is perfect. It's great. It's definitely plenty enough for this aircraft, but uh, because we're going on the upper end of the, uh, the engine size for this aircraft, uh, just one of those little insurances. But if you're building one of these aircraft, you're putting a smaller engine in it you, you don't need to put the carbon rod on there it's definitely in my opinion not necessary uh, we're just doing it because bigger engine okay so we've got our carbon rods all done up all installed and uh, the only other thing we're going to do here is we're going to put a washer on the side with the ball link and this is actually a 256 washer, so it's a, it's a bigger size washer from my RTL kits. And then we'll do these guys up. There we go. So now we've got a good washer on there holding that ball link from popping off. And we'll do the same thing on the aileron surface. There we go. So obviously our length here now is pretty much fixed. If we do have to make any small adjustments, we'll just use the Xbus menu in the, uh, in the actual servo and adjust the programming. And uh, that's how we can fix that. But we should be perfect because we got our carbon rods cut perfectly. So this wing for these surfaces is complete. What we'll do is we, uh, we're not gonna leave these bolted down yet because we need to run our servo extensions, but uh, we do have, have our leads here to do a final check. And we're just gonna do the same thing to the other wing. All right, so just getting ready to run the extensions for the servos through the wing to the output port here. And while we're here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a string for the landing gear and brake lines as well. Because once I get the servos on, I don't wanna to have to take them off again. Now in the manual, they get all of the wing stuff done, front and back, elevators, rudders, all that stuff. And then they talk about uh, installing the landing gear. Now I think the reason they, they have it later on is because on the wings here, uh, it goes through uh, installing the wings with the fixing tabs and blind nuts and all that kind of stuff. And uh, because the landing gear extends from the wing and goes into the fuselage, that would just get in the way of doing that stuff. So I'm pretty sure that's why they suggest doing the gear afterwards, which makes sense. Uh, so anyways, we're going to continue following the manual and uh, we're just gonna route a string through this area. So pulling these lines through later on is, uh, is gonna be easy. All right, so with the main wings now complete, the next step in the manual is moving on to the elevator. So we are done step number eight now. Flip the page. Step number nine and 10 have already been completed because we have already hinged our horizontal stab surfaces, right? That's one of the first things we did in the first video. So the, the hinging portion is done now as well too. Um, next thing we need to do is install the elevator servo trays. So let's take a look and see what we can do to find those guys. And obviously we're working on the, uh, the servo portion. All right, so we do have some options that are included with the kit here. So basically they, they've included three of these servo covers, which are uh, two for the elevator, the red ones here, and then the white one is for the rudder vertical stab setup. So uh, these servo trays or hatch covers would be for a mini servo like this. Now, you're gonna have to get a pretty small servo to be able to use this style of servo. And the uh, reason for that is when it sits in this area right here, uh, this back part is generally too big. So this is a, a small JR3411 servo, which we're using on the rudder. Um, but anyways, they, they do include the flat trays as well too that they show in the manual. So they do include options um, and these are the servos that we'll be using for the elevators. So these are the uh, S1855 2K servos. These are amazing little servos. They're a little pricey, um, but they are outstanding servos. So 
These are the ones that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be drilling through the cover plates and uh, mounting this uh, with the supplied hardware right there. Now they do only include three uh, screw setups because in the manual here, they're showing a KST servo, uh, which only has three, three holes. So, but we'll figure something out there. So pretty straightforward um, how we're gonna do this. Uh, next step here is cut off the shaded portion. So we're gonna do that. We're going to get the elevator servo mounted on this, mark the three holes, well, four holes in our case, and uh, get them drilled. So the actual process for the elevators is pretty simple. It's, it's not a whole lot different than the wings themselves. We're going to have to cut the horns that go into the elevators as well, just like we did on the main wings. And they do show some nice pictures of the finished product. So you'll see how it's done up there. And then also when you look at the wings, some of the important points on the wings is the output for the servo is as far away from the surface as possible because you could just flip these covers around but uh, that's how things are laid out. So, all right, so we're making some changes on the elevator setups here. So the way it's shown in the manual is to have the servo horn on and uh, you're fairly limited with these thin wing servos like this. Uh, the output shafts on most of them are smaller than the standard size servos. What they're showing in the manual is basically you take that plastic servo arm or nylon servo arm and you have one of their ball joints mounted like that. Now that is a, uh, in my opinion, a big no-no on a plastic servo horn. Uh, they don't deal well with side to side forces and it's gonna be very, very flexible. So not going that route for sure. So we are going with the nylon servo arms, but we wanna have a clevis on that servo arm. It works way better. So that's what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a clevis. Now, the standard rods and ball joints and everything that come with the kit are these guys here. Now they're not 256 rod, they're actually 2.5 millimeters, so they're bigger than the 256 rod. So we aren't able to take the stock rods and use a 256 golden clevis. And they kind of do fit into the 440 ones, but just barely, right? There's no threads grabbing. So it's kind of an in-between size. So we do need to up the size of everything. So what I've done here is we've got the nylon servo arm. We've actually got uh, some larger ball joints or ball links. Now the output shaft on these guys, they're both a two millimeter uh, bolt that goes through the ball, which is great. Um, but this one's designed for 440 rod. This is the stock one that comes with the kit. Uh, the width on them in between the balls here, this dimension right there, is very similar. The, the bigger one that I'm using is just a little bit wider, but it should be fine. So what we're able to do now is we have the Sullivan Golden Clevis. We've got a piece of 440 rod. We'll take that uh, larger ball joint, put it on there, and this is what we're actually using for the elevator setup. And uh, the ball joint gets supported on both sides with the horns and the golden clevis will be perfect on that nylon uh, servo arm. So that's our elevator setup and uh, I think it's gonna work out just peachy. All right, so we are all ready to install this servo setup here. So um, we've prepped our horns just like we did the other ones. Uh, on the elevator ones, you have to cut them a little bit shorter because the this, this surface is so thin. I uh, only used three of these fixing bolts because that's a, they are extremely solid. Uh, we, we did add washers on here as well too. The kit doesn't come with washers, but the instructions show washers. So we put some washers on there. Uh, these JR servos actually work out well because the bolt just can fit right in between the two mounting tabs there. Of course we use Loctite, but this, uh, that setup's amazing. So uh, we're only gonna use three there cause that is all that's needed. So next thing to do is we need to glue the horns in place. Now we've done the same thing we did on the wings. Uh, we've cut the horns down. We have cut the covering off that area and uh, we'll just mix up some 
20 minute high saw and we'll glue that in place. Now, one of the things that I am not 100% sure on yet is these servo arms. I don't know if that's gonna give us enough travel. The manual calls for 30 mils and 30 mils, which is wrong. It's, that's way too much travel for something like this. So it's probably 15 in each direction. Um, I think this might give us 15. We'll, we'll have to see once this is cured and we can hook it up. But uh, we've also got the ball joint mounted in the inner hole here, which will give you more travel. And I just want to take a quick moment and thank each and every one of you that has donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you so much for the donations. It is truly appreciated. We've been collecting donations for a while and uh, it's, it's outstanding. So thank you to everybody, whether your donation has been big or small, it is truly appreciated. Thank you. I just want to give you guys a close up of the process here. So when you're gluing these surfaces in, you basically want to fill the uh, receiver portions here with uh, epoxy, or in my case, high saw. Um, so I just take trusty bent screwdriver, scoop this stuff up, and then just push it into the into the area. And then what I was doing was getting a little bit mounted on the flat area. And then we just take the actual horns. And one of the primary things I'm trying to do is fill that little hole with epoxy. So it comes out the other side. And then we just want to get everything wet. I don't, uh, really not necessary to get a whole bunch on the actual horns because then you just end up cleaning it up or having to clean it up when it oozes out the side. So all I'm doing is just giving just a light coating to all the areas on the horns. And then a little bit on the bottoms. Like that. And then You just get it installed. Now you can see how much actually oozes out here, <laughs> which is fairly normal. That's why you don't go too heavy on the, uh, on the uh, amount on the actual horns. So anyways, um, now what do I do with this? I just take my, my trusty here and we just clean this up. Now you could use tape on this stuff, but I just make sure that I clean it up quick enough with rubbing alcohol and it gets rid of all the residue. Like that. And we take a rag, put down some rubbing alcohol, and get it cleaned up. All right, guys, and that's everything for this episode of the Boomerang Ranger build. I feel like we got a lot accomplished with the, uh, the wings now complete, uh, the elevators essentially complete and uh, moving forward in this build at a great pace. Don't forget about the Sky Candy nose landing light giveaway. Make sure you comment down below in the comment section of this video with the word candy to be entered in this giveaway. We'll be giving this light away in about a week's time, so probably next Tuesday. Uh, we'll give this light away and the winners will be chosen or the winner will be chosen from the comments section of this video. So you have to thumbs up this video. You have to be a subscriber of the channel and you have to use the word candy in your comment down below. Doesn't matter how you use it, but just have to use the word candy. So that's everything for this episode, guys. If you have any questions, listen down below, shoot me an email, whatever you feel is the best way to contact me is good. So thanks for watching this episode and we'll see you next time.